Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today we're going to be talking about snow shovels and some tips for shoveling snow. I'd like to thank Speed Double Zero Kills for a five-star rating and review on iTunes. So the earliest snow shovel was found in a bog in Russia, and they estimated that to be about 6,000 years old. Wow. And then they have evidence that about 2,000 years ago, they were using the shoulder blades of elk and oxen to create snow shovels. Yeah. And since 1870, there's been more than 100 different patents for snow shovels. It's weird. You wouldn't think there'd, there'd be 100 different designs unique enough. And then the first plastic snow shovel was patented in 1939. That's crazy. So you want to start off with safety concerns first? Okay. So according to a study by the American Journal of Emergency Medicine, in the U.S., there's about 11,000 injuries a year from people shoveling snow. Hmm. And they say that because you're using your whole body, you can actually, your heart rate can be higher than doing aerobic exercise. And the problem is, with freezing temperatures, it constricts your blood vessels, Mm -hmm. which really stresses your heart. So it's important that, and a lot of doctors say that you should really warm up before you, and stretch before you go out and shovel, which most people, you know, probably aren't doing, and wear layers so you can strip them off. Mm -hmm. And like we talked about in the weatherization episode, oh boy, merino wool, some Mm -hmm. long underwear, the merino, if you have merino wool long underwear, it's going to allow you to have four to seven degrees higher body temperature, and it pulls that moisture away from your body, huh. so you're much more comfortable. So that's one of my tips. Is Do you the... have any hat suggestions? <laughs> no. <laughs> so when you're picking a shovel, you should get it about chest high. The handle should be about chest high. If the handle is too short, you're forced to bend over to try to lift a load, especially if you're using a, a scoop-type shovel. If it's too long... and So you're... handles come in different sizes? You have different lengths in the handles, and then you can also cut them down. Most handles... Like the the D-shaped handles are screwed in place. So one thing that a lot of customers don't do, and you know we've helped actually a couple of our customers with, is just cut it down for them so it's more comfortable. Mm-hmm. We had a, a couple older customers who you know were small, and we cut the handles down, and it made a huge difference in them using the shovels, making it easier for them. If your handle's way too long and you're trying to lift it, it's really hard on the small of your back. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that's kind of one tip you can do is kind of adjust. You want about chest high. And then you want to make sure that you're always shoveling close to your body. You want to use your legs. You want to keep your back straight, keep your stomach tight, and you're going to have, you know, less problems, especially if you're not doing a lot of regular exercise. So what about those ergonomic shovels? So studies have actually shown that the ergonomic shovels can cause wrist and back pain if you're trying to lift and scoop snow and throw it. So the ergonomic shovels are great for pushing because it, it, it allows you to stand up straighter and, and you're not bent over so it doesn't hurt the small of your back. Why don't you de- but, describe what it looks like? So the ergonomic shovels, the handle comes straight out of the shovel itself and then it waves... Where else is it going to go? <laughs> it waves up and, and across so it has so this... like in the middle. So it has a hump in the center of the handle and it allows you to have much better posture while you're pushing. The problem is if you try to scoop snow with one of these and throw it, mm-hmm. it actually hurts your wrists and the small of your back because it's it's not really designed for that twisting motion, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. So, you know, it's it's very beneficial in one way, but if you're using it incorrectly, it's it's going to cause a problem. For most people, I would say that rather than ergonomic, if you had two styles of shovel, if you had a push style and a scoop style, you're going to be able to do most of your snow removal jobs, and you're going to have the right tool for whatever you're using. Why don't you explain the differences then? So uh, a push shovel is going to be wider. It usually doesn't have you know high sides. It's really designed for light snow. So. If you've got weather conditions where you just have, you know, a small amount of snow coming down, it's very light, it's not heavy, you're able to push it and move a lot of snow very quickly. And so you're, you're basically just, 
standing behind it and you're just pushing it. If you've got heavier, wetter snow or you know it's been snowing all day and now you have larger piles, you're going to want a smaller, more narrow shovel and it's going to usually have higher sides and a higher back so you can really scoop it and hold a large amount of snow and then throw it out of the way. There's a lot of different sizes for shovels. What do you recommend? So for a scoop, if you're looking to just grab a lot of snow and throw it, probably that 18 to 20 inch wide is a nice size. And I would look for something that has high sides and a high back. It really grabs the snow and holds it while you move it. Mm -hmm. If you're looking just to push snow, then you're probably looking for 25 inches to 30 inches wide. Most of these aren't going to have high sides. It just allows you to push light snow and pile it up. What are your thoughts like for plastic or metal? I really like the new plastic shovels. Most of these shovels have really good warranties. They're heavy duty. They're very lightweight. I like a plastic shovel with a steel wear strip on the edge of it. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to really go into to pretty heavy snow. But it's good to know your home because if you've got a driveway at the end of it, if you have snow plows that always go by and they're leaving really heavy, icy piles at the end of your driveway. Yeah, that's been compacted. A, a plastic shovel's just not going to do right. it. So it's nice to have a steel shovel in those situations. Steel is a little heavier though, so you just have to be aware of that. You can get aluminum, mm -hmm. but you know, again, they're not as heavy duty as steel. If you do get aluminum and you're thinking about using that for this heavy snow, again, I would get it with that steel wear strip on the edge of it. Mm -hmm. You know, most of these new plastics, they just do a really nice job, and some of the handles are a resin handle, and they have a lifetime warranties. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so you know, better and better shovels now that you can pick up. What are some top-rated companies in the U.S.? Klondike, True Temper. Bigfoot, mm -hmm. Suncast, and Grant are rated the highest that I've seen. Why don't you talk about your trick for using silicon spray? So I think a, a great thing to do every fall before the season is to spray both sides of your snow shovel with a silicone spray. So we always sold Liquid Wrench. It does a nice job. We sold the silicone spray for the chutes of your snow blower and then for shovels. Mm -hmm. Spray both sides. Because what happens if you have wet heavy snow sometimes you scoop it and you try to throw it and it just kind of stays mm -hmm. on the shovel which is hard on on your back because you're expecting it to come off and then what happens sometimes if you have an aluminum or a steel shovel and let's say you keep it in an attached garage where it's warm mm -hmm. and you come outside and it's really freezing temperatures you'll get condensation and then ice on it and st snow will really stick to it. <laughs> so by putting the silicone spray on there, it really allows the snow to release and it keeps it from freezing as easy. So it's just something simple that I think that everybody should do before the season. So is this just something you do once a year? It, and I would reapply it. So I would, you know, in fall, I would soak it both sides, let it dry. And then during the season, I would spray it maybe two or three times during the season mm -hmm. just to keep that silicone coating on there. I think another tool that we should talk about are ice scrapers. Yeah, I think it's nice to have because, it, again, we're talking about if you have a driveway and you have snow plows that come by, at the end of the, your driveway you have these heavy, icy mounds of snow. Whether you're shoveling or using a snow blower, you know, you can't attack that very easily. But with an ice scraper, you know, you've got this long handle and a nice metal solid wedge mm -hmm. that you can pound straight down into it, knock off small chunks, and then you can also scrape with this. So for certain areas, I just think that it's just a nice tool to have because now you're not putting all this wear and tear on your blower or your shovel. I think everybody should have a snow shovel in their car. I think that's a great idea. We could have used that during the big blizzard. Ah, the here, blizzard. Here in Chicago. I was taking you uh, home from work. Because <laughs> oh. we thought we were, we were smart. Because it was supposed to snow. The, the blizzard was supposed to come in on Tuesday night. And we did all of our office work and everything on a Wednesday right. normally. So we're like, there's no get way we're going to make it in on Wednesday. So let's get it done early. So let's get it done. Uh, we'll power through, get it done on Tuesday. Which caused us to stay late. And then... <laughs> <laughs> It started off okay. Yeah, ah, this is no big deal. Yeah, yeah we're used so, to Chicago winters. Yeah, yeah. So, so we got on an exit ramp. Yeah, like it, halfway. And what was it? A tow truck that went off the the side of the road? No, it was a semi that jacked. Semi, my... okay. 
and then we got stuck behind a bunch of cars and it just kept snowing <laughs> and snowing it was uh-huh. just it was just and we sat there for how many hours eight hours eight hours well it took us eight hours to get home amazing and so we so there was a, a tow truck or not a tow truck there was a plow that went yeah, by a us snow plow and i was thinking you know what i should just get behind this plow and just follow it yeah but you didn't and so i waited and then a couple other cars tried to move up and then i tried to get around a car and then kind of slid off <laughs> slid off the road a little bit and and, yeah. and then we were stuck Yep. And so what would have been great... Well, because you tried to organize all the people behind us that they were yeah. going to push us out. That didn't do it. Right. I, I jumped out and I told everybody, okay. Yeah. yeah uh, Here, let's, here's the plan. Let... <laughs> if so we, then if... when, you know, the uh, uh, IDOT people came to, right. to pull everybody out because they, everybody was stuck because there was that much snow. I mean, it was like up to the, you know, halfway up the car. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, of course, they all got pulled out first, even the people behind us, because right. we were in the ditch. Right, because we slid off. Well, on yeah. the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, we weren't completely off. But if we would have had a car shovel, yeah. we would have been able to get around the wheels mm-hmm. and move back into line, which would have got us out of there, what, an hour earlier? Ugh. So I think it's, it's if you're in an area where it snows a lot... You know, they're, they're small. Usually, most of them have these uh, telescopic handles. Right. You so throw least it you can, in your trunk. And, and throw one of these uh, jugs of ice melt. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like a real good rock salt for traction. Or a calcium chloride is going to melt and give you traction. Uh, True Temper actually has an interesting car shovel. And it's called the Auto Boss. Mm-hmm. It fold, it's really small, but it folds up flat. And then it opens and locks in place, and it just allows you to kind of scrape snow and scoop it away from your tires. Well, because like in the blizzard, I mean, you were worried about the exhaust. Yeah, well, the snow was getting so so high that I kept going in back and moving the snow because I was scared, you know, exhaust would be coming up through the car. Because again, we're sitting there for hours. And so, you know what it was, because we made fun of the blizzard all day. Because right. everybody was like, oh, <laughs> the blizzard. Yeah, yeah how uh, bad can it be? Yeah, well, that was terrible. But talking about... My mom kept calling all yeah, night. Sure, like, well, where sure. Are you? Yeah. Where are you? I'm going to send your father. I'm like, send my father to what? <laughs> We're in the car. He could be stuck behind us. <laughs> like, Dad's going to be trudging through the snow. Right. Cindy, I'm here to rescue you. With a sleigh. Come on. <laughs> But another unique snow shovel I saw from True Temper is called the Snow Boss, and it's S N O B O S S. Spell it, man. And it's a, a very interesting look, looking shovel. So it's kind of fan shaped, the shovel itself, and then it has a U shaped. What do you mean fan shaped? So it has a, a wide bottom no, you that's, have a that, that's flared out, and then it has a U shaped handle that you can get both hands on. Mm hmm. Below that, in the center of it, it has two extra handles where you can actually grab it now, one hand down low and one hand on the top, oh, that's and smart. so it gives you nice leverage. Mm-hmm. So it looks so I might have to pick one up this uh, year and, and check it out. They also say it's designed to have a foot stop on the top of the shovel itself so you can really push it into heavy, heavy uh, mounds of snow. Mm-hmm. So it looks like a, a very unique design, and they run around $35. It's also reversible, they say, so you can turn it over, and that front edge, you can pound straight down into the driveway and drag snow away, so you can use it like a scraper. Oh, nice. So that's kind of a a unique design that I've seen. Do you have any techniques or strategies for cleaning off a driveway? So growing up, we lived in this apartment that was up on a hill and a very long driveway, so it was just crazy to try to get the cars up in a heavy snowstorm. Was it uphill both ways? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Downhill, man. <laughs> like, it's scary because it went right into the road. Yeah. So luckily the landlord lived in one of the apartments. And so, you know, he would get up early and salt it and, and shovel in the morning. But in the evening, on Fridays and Saturday nights, my mom got, got home like 1 or 2 in the morning. So my whole childhood, my dad would wake me up if it was a snowy Friday or Saturday mm-hmm. night, and we would get dressed and we would shovel this driveway. And so, you know, we tried all different types of techniques. And what we found was the, the easiest way to clear it the fastest was imagine this is a long run so we would each get on one side and we would go all the way down the length of the driveway clearing off the edges Uh and then we would come back up and we'd meet at the top and we would push all the way down and clear the center and then we would start working from the center to the edges where we had cleared that first path Uh and that allowed us kind of this clear area where we could lift the snow from there and then throw it 
and we used a you know a scoop style shovel so that mm-hmm. we were actually throwing the snow show the snow off of the the driveway and we found you know just from our experience that was the easiest and I kind of shared this with a few customers over the years and you know most people kind of like that technique getting the edges done first clearing off the center and then working from the center off to the edges and that first area that you cleared off kind of gives you just that extra room to throw it because you don't have extra snow there. Right. So I would recommend that. One other technique that I've uh, read from guys who are professional snow removers, they say that they like to start in the very center of the driveway and then work out almost like a star pattern. So they'll start from the center and they'll push off to one corner and throw it and then come back to the center and push off to the other corner and then just keep alternating it almost like a a, kind of a star pattern Mm -hmm. and they claim that that allows you to not work back into a lot of snow so you're building these huge piles that you have to kind of throw so I would say one or the other of those techniques probably is the fastest and easiest way to to use a, a snow shovel you know talking about shoveling snow when I was a kid what's funny is the landlord always had the cheapest plastic shovels that, and, and that's what we used but you know they were they were terrible the the handles would twist sometimes so probably imports yeah like an well that's like like us when we at the hardware store you know we always had a couple skews that were just inexpensive mm-hmm. and these import shovels I would take the time if you're looking for a shovel to kind of handle it hit it on the ground and and just see how it feels I would look for one that has at least one screw that's holding the handle to the shovel itself Itself. and some shovels will come with two or three other dimples like in the the, the base of the handle mm-hmm. where they uh, you know it's it's kind of pre-drilled to allow a screw and I would put extra screws in there I would buy a couple additional stainless steel small screws mm-hmm. and again talk to the hardware store some hardware stores will actually put them in for you but it's going to add a lot of strength to the shovel especially if you're looking at a plastic shovel. If you're twisting and pushing into heavy snow, you're putting a lot of stress there. I, I think the main return that we always got was from an inexpensive shovel cracking right where the handle inserts into the shovel right. itself. So I would look for that. You know, Spend a couple dollars more for a better shovel. You're going to get uh, much longer use out of it. It's going to be much more comfortable. If you buy a plastic shovel without the metal wear strip, Mm -hmm. what you can do with that is uh, some of my older shovels, in in fact, what my dad used to do is take uh, a box cutter or a razor knife, and he would trim that edge because they they get really rough, Mm -hmm. and then they almost get indented, almost, you know, serrated. So if you can smooth that and get it nice and even, it's going to do a much better job for you. So you're like whittling your shovel? Yeah. (laughs) Yes, that's why I like the steel wear strip. <laughs> just, you know, it's done. It's it's you know, it's just riveted in place for you. And then, if you're concerned that shoveling snow is just too stressful for you, you can pick up one of these electric snow shovels. And the top three rated brands are Toro, Greenworks, and Snowjo. Spell it. And, and Snowjo is S N O J O E. It'll run you about a hundred dollars. So this is like if a snowblower is too big for you to handle, or it's too expensive yeah this is lightweight it's easy it just it you push it into the snow and it throws it right out the front so you're going to be working um, sideways to your driveway and these will throw snow about 15 to 20 feet Mm -hmm. and then one tip with this i would try to use one of these extreme weather extension cords so it's it's considered a cold weather cord it's going to stay flexible so they don't get real stiff and hard. Sometimes a, a standard outdoor cord is difficult to use in really cold temperatures. And then always make sure you match the amount of amps that your tool is pulling to the extension cord. What about the robo handle? <laughs> I love the robo handle. So we did that. We did a video on our Fix It Home Improvement channel on YouTube for leaf rakes. Where you made your neighbor yeah. rake leaves. <laughs> it's, it's a good one. So we took the robo handle, these ergonomic handles that you can put on any long handle tool, and I cut down my rakes, my leaf rakes, mm-hmm. and I put one on each, and so I created this big long lawn scoop, or leaf scoop, mm-hmm. and it worked amazing. So I was talking to the invent- inventor. He actually lives here in the Chicago area. So I ran over to his house, he was showing me a couple things, and he showed me a video where last year he took two push-style snow shovels and he put his robo-handles on this, 
put them side by side, and he cleared his driveway in minutes. Just became a shoveling machine. Right. So I'm looking forward to trying that this uh, winter. So you can check out our uh, Fix It Home Improvement channel on YouTube, and we should have an interesting video to see how well that works. So you want to wrap this up? So if it were me, I would have two styles of snow shovel. I would have one push and one scoop. So depending on the weather and whatever the conditions are, you can always do a nice job. I would always use a silicone spray on the shovels. And then I would add an extra screw to both of the handles. And have a car shovel. And hire a neighbor. <laughs> so I guess that wraps up this episode. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.